Our next presenter is Ms. Oet Haim, Haim, and her presentation is on the Agape Love and Forgiveness Education Innovations in Israel, presented in Hebrew. Ms. Oet Chaim has 27 years of experience teaching in elementary schools and leads the domain of science learning in Rimonim Kiryat Tivon Elementary School in Kiryat Tivon in Israel. During her career, Oet has taken an active part in developing new curricula in which she assimilates both values and skills. Oet Chaim was born and raised in Israel, is married, and has three boys. She creates sculpture and painting as a hobby. Oet holds an MA in political science from Haifa University and a BA in humanities and social sciences and has a senior teacher license. Ms. Oet Chaim. Hello, I'm very happy to see you all. I'm Orit from Israel. Now I switch to Hebrew. All right. Okay. I would like to tell you now how it all started. It all started uh, this year, uh, this day, a year ago, on the summer vacation, I got a telephone call from my head teacher who tells me that he uh, joined a new project on the subject of forgiveness. And I'm asking him, what is it about? He says, I'll get some more details and I'll send them to you. And then I remember that on my bookshelf at home, there was one book on the subject of forgiveness, which I never got around to reading. So I approach this uh, bookshelf and I pull out the book. Uh, and the book is To Know How to Forgive uh, by Dr. Gerald Jampolsky. And I start reading it and I read it. And this is where my personal journey toward forgiveness starts. And I learned from reading this book that one of the toughest things uh, that he experienced was uh, the arrival of forgiveness in his life. Uh, forgiveness allows us to put an end to our own difficulties, and it allows people to stop recycling uh, anger and guilt. He learned how to forgive himself, and that allowed him to heal himself as well as others. And from here, I continue, actually, and I want to tell you, as I have been presented already, uh, that I'm Orit Chaim, and I'm married, a mother of three uh, sons. I truly love the arts, sculpting and painting. I've been in uh, the teaching uh, field for 27 years. I was born and grew up in Israel. I live in Kiryatif On, and I would like to show it to you. This uh, little town is extremely green. You will see that it's uh, in a rural area. You have many trees. A lot of nature surrounds our little town. As you can see, this little town is in the northern part of Israel. I teach in the Rimonim School, which is located in Kirat Tivon. I'm a head, uh, head teacher in uh, the fifth grade, a homeroom teacher, and I coordinate the science teaching. I see a great vocation and meaning in the work of education. I believe it is a great privilege to shape the future generations. And before we even start, I would like to show you how our school looks like. In our yard, we play.
we make things. This year, we enjoy diverse learning areas. We experience shared experiential learning processes. We enjoy social activities and outdoor activities as well. When we walk into the school, we enjoy experiential classes. We have children who teach other children. We have playing areas. We create and we enjoy what we do. We combine the community with our learning. We give room to emotional discourse. We invite you to come visit us. The journey toward forgiveness as part of the Jewish culture. I saw this journey as part of our very culture here in Israel in the month of September. This is the beginning of the Jewish year, and this is when the month of Tishrei's holidays begin. The first uh, holiday is the New Year's Eve, after which comes the Yom Kippur War, uh, the Yom Kippur Day. It is a day of atonement and prayer, whose uh, purpose is to ask forgiveness and seek reconciliation. We accept the uh, sacredness and holiness of the day by fasting and praying. And I always decide once Yom Kippur is over to continue the natural path to forgiveness and reconciliation. And now that af now I know that after lunch it's very hard time to everyone. But but was a agape love. The goal of the class was to define and to illustrate this concept. And how did I do that? I spoke to the children and mostly, and I illustrated this to them by giving them examples from real life. I told them that this love, this altruistic love, can be expressed by restraint, by tolerance, by smiling at someone, by asking someone how they are and can we help them. I gave them tangible examples that are taken from their daily life. And then once we implemented or assimilated this concept, we continued to read the Tigris in the tall grass. And once we were done with this story, I asked every child to close their eyes and to try to think about a place that would be their safe physical place. In that particular place, Every student had to know that this is where they can always go to. This is where they can think about incidents that happen to them. This is where they can increase their self-worth. And I would like to go back to that Tigris in the tall grass. This story is comprised 
of a conflict. It evolves around a conflict, and there's a tangible description of a situation between a child and his parents. The girl, in this case, perceives it as an unfair hurt. And the story offers a solution that is expressed on two levels, acceptance and seeing the self-worth. Uh, what, what does she do? She offers love, and how does she do it? With the help of a kiss. And this story is leading the students toward a solution where the heart softens after being hardened following this injustice. And then I go back to the guided uh, imagination, uh, and I ask them to think about a physical safe place where they can always go to and relax. You too can try to think about this safe place of yours that can actually strengthen your self-worth. Try to think about it, and now try to think, could you express this with the help of your hands with plasticine. I brought plasticine to class, and every child, after visualizing their safe place, created that safe place with the help of plasticine. And I'll give you examples here. They created a hammock that they have in their garden under the trees. And the girl said that my room is my safe place where I can relax and increase my self-worth, be with my cat, my garden, my room. All these examples were actually uh, examples made um, real and physical with the help of plasticine. Class number five, uh, the whole idea of increasing agape love uh, through forgiveness. The goal of the uh, lesson was to explain this concept. I created a po poster where um, uh, respect and kindness and, uh, and love were the uh, center of it. The children created a list of ways by which they express all these three, and then they wrote this each on their own, in their own way, and then whoever wanted shared this, and they shared their products. We move on to lesson number six. Uh, lesson number six that talks about agape love, expressing it in a balanced way. The goal was to create balance while we uh, do our forgiveness and show love. I presented to them uh, the uh, this uh, picture of this acrobat walking this tightrope, and I asked them, what is her goal? How will she achieve her goal? goal. I had a, a guided visualization exercise with them in which we were walking that tightrope. We were actually walking that tight rope of forgiveness because a certain injustice was done to us and we're trying to forgive. We, could you too try to visualize us walking on this tight rope, standing on it, and in front of you, you have this a sign, and in it are uh, the words, have you um, stopped this crossing? It means that you've risen to the challenge of love. In order to forgive truly, you have to give love. Uh, this poem was a bit longer, and I'm making it short for you. I explained to them that the balance is done by two buckets that balance each other. One is the kindness that I deserve, and another is the kindness that we show those who hurt us. The children gave themselves totally into this exercise, and they visualized that walking on the tight rope that requires this balance. Forgiveness is actually walking that tight rope in the sense that when we forgive, we have to balance between different things in order to guarantee that forgiveness will be genuine and safe. 
toward the end of this exercise, I asked the children to uh, make drawings. And indeed, you can see children who walk that tightrope and express so much of what they feel. I'd like to share with you one drawing that truly touched my heart. I'm not sure if you can actually see every detail of it, but there's a child who created this circus, and he called it the Good Deeds Circus. He drew this somewhat sad figure. And on the other side, if you can see, you can see another figure standing with a big smile on its face. And when this acrobat is walking that tight rope, and you have uh, hearts on one side and more sadness on the other, and I talked to him afterwards, and he told me how difficult striking that balance is and how much thought he invested in it. And this drawing, in my view, truly illustrates genuinely what this student took away with him. I'd like to continue and share with you a bit of my perspective regarding this program. This program, during the course of the 14 weeks, uh, this class is given once a week. The children were waiting impatiently for the class. They loved the stories. They loved our conversations. The, uh, the movie Narnia, the various activities. We had an active boarding class, a thematic board, and every class it changed. I added drawings, I added pictures. This board was actually an active board that the children always approached, always read what was on it. Everyone had their own personal uh, journal. Uh, titled The Journey Toward Forgiveness. There were those who were happy to share with others and others I totally respected their choice not to. It was a discreet uh, process for them. This notebook was a place to come down for them where they could draw their drawings and write their thoughts. I truly believe in experiential learning, in hands-on learning, and I implement it uh, with the help of the arts and sciences. I use interdisciplinary uh, learning. I combine different subjects around the learned topic. What I did here is actually take the journey toward forgiveness as a topic, and I combined it as a multidisciplinary teaching method. How did I do it? In language, I use the stories to impart linguistic capabilities. In the sciences, we learned about the characteristics of the Tigris. In English, they learned related texts. And throughout this journey, I combined the arts with the help of various activities. Art, in my view, allows children to have a non-verbal expression of the thoughts they had. The art and the creative approach are changes for powerful uh, tools for powerful change, and they were expressed throughout our journey. Uh, implementing this in a different subject. In mid-year, we usually give tests. It's called the mapping, uh, the mid-year the mid mapping test. I gave them a test on a uh, different subject that was not related, and various questions were given. And I was sitting at home, and I read their answers. And I see that their answers uh, are given with the help of the concepts that we learned. They start writing the child so his self-worth. He gave agape love. I was so happy to see that the children actually took those concepts that they learned and transferred them to other subjects. As far as I was concerned, that was a major achievement and a big surprise to see that these concepts were actually assimilated and infiltrated into their entire life and other subjects as well. Toward the end of every week, we do a weekly summary, and I ask them how their week was for them, how they feel. Uh, they always talked about the process they were going through, how much they love sharing 
how pleasant it is for them, to what extent these concepts and this journey helps them and improves their quality of life. And also from my talks with parents, the parents told me that this agape love now enters their homes and children tell them that they give uh, agape love today. And it was a great joy to see how it is assimilated gradually. I'd like to show you a short clip about how they truly felt. What did you learn in the program, The Journey Toward Forgiveness? I learned about my own self-worth and the self-worth of others, how to give agape love with the help of a smile even. What did you like when we learned the program? What did you learn in the program, The Journey? I learned about my own self-worth and the self-worth of others, offering agape love with the help of a smile or forgiveness. What did you like? I like the plasticine that we each imagine they're a safe place. What did you learn in the journey toward forgiveness? I learned to relax when I'm vexed and angry, when my sister annoys me. It helps me calm down. What did you like to learn during the program? I like learning about the tigris in the tall grass. And the child understood that his father too has his own self-worth. And that's the reason that he, and, and perhaps that's why uh, his father was angry because he too was hurt. I learned that even when you're angry and when you don't like what you're going through, um, your self-worth is there and it allows you to feel less sad and less angry. When I'm sad and when I'm vexed and angry, I always use the tools that I learned here. I also remember that we learned English that I truly like. And I learned about this girl that had those buckets. Uh, in one bucket, she held all that hurt her. And on the other, uh, what she uh, did to hurt others. And what did you learn about forgiveness in your journey? I learned how to help others to relax. And it connects me to this other thing about giving agape love. From what I understood, this will truly help us with ourselves if we give this to others. It, gave us, it gives us a good feeling. And this improved me tremendously. What did you like about the program? I particularly liked the class on Narnia, that we watched the film what did you learn from the film following that journey? I learned that you truly need to forgive everyone, even if they did something bad. We don't need to forgive the deed, but to forgive ourselves. Okay, so these are truly some of the feelings and the experiences uh, that the children had. No, 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 not this one. You don't want to watch this again, I'm sure. So from here, we leap forward to the end of the uh, topic uh, class. As a science teacher, it was only natural for me to end this topic with a scientific experiment, experiment with the two glasses of the cold and the hot water. We had uh, two glasses. I put a uh, uh, color in, uh, edible color in both glasses, and I asked the children where would the color mix uh, quicker. 
And of course, that in the hot water uh, glass, uh, the color mixed uh, quicker because a warm heart is one that embraces uh, love and forgiveness uh, quicker. Our heart has to warm up and soften in order to allow the magic of forgiveness and love mix in it. I'd like to play a song that is called We All Need Kindness. It, uh, invites us to think about the importance of giving, uh, both to the givers and those who receive, and the meaning of kindness, because true kindness is done without the giver expecting anything in return. To conclude, I would like to say that this program has great importance in the education of our children. I believe this is the most significant program that imparts a very important value and competence in life. I felt that forgiveness is actually power. Those who have the ability to forgive and to give uh, agape love are made more powerful and that it was my feeling that's what i took with me and something small that the children uh, sang uh, when we concluded uh, this program So thanks for being a, a great audience. <laughs>